St. Lucia's population has increased by an estimated 65,000 in the last 40 years. The effects of this growth caused expansion of coastal settlements and occupation of more land to accommodate the needs of a growing housing sector. Corresponding developments took place in the tourism sector. More space for commerce, industry, schools and recreational activities were developed. Banana plantations dominated the agriculture landscape until the early 1990s. Available data places less than 5% of St. Lucia's land as covered by buildings and man-made surfaces. Less than 20% by agriculture and the rest, nearly 80%, labelled as forest cover including grassland and all other vegetation. On the surface, St. Lucia appears as an emerald island in the Caribbean. But as we look closer, this gem is losing its sheen. There is significant land degradation occurring. Land degradation is a complex issue for St. Lucia. This is because of the relationship between poor soil conservation in farming practices causing slope erosion and stream sedimentation and pollution from use of biohazards against pests and weeds in fields. In a business-as-usual scenario, this will become worse as temperatures increase over the next 10 to 50 years. You see every year the amount of money that is being spent to remove seal in our rivers. Because when you see you have heavy rains now, because of the level of deforestation, poor land management that is taking place on the hillsides, you see what happened to the, the, the ocean, the sea, discoloration of the water right away. This chain of events, more than often, disrupts the supply of drinking water, reduces water quality, causes flooding of human settlements, and the destruction of riverbanks and coastal ecosystems. Livestock farming on riverbanks continues to be a source of concern as well as loading high levels of pollutants in surface water. Land degradation is killing the rivers in St. Lucia, the veins pressed between the mountains that make life possible on the island. We need the private landowners to be able to also help in restoring the degraded lands. But let's see tomorrow that parcel that is owned by me in Fonce Jacques. There is a market that opens for, let's say, pineapples. We're getting a good price for pineapples. There is nothing preventing us from preventing the farmer or the landowner from clearing all his trees and say, these trees are not, I'm not benefiting from these trees in terms of economic money. I can now clear two acres of land and put my pineapples. So that's a serious challenge for us because you have no control as to what happens to that parcel of land simply because our legislation does not cover activities on private lands. The extent of land degradation from farming has reduced over the last 20 years with a significant downward trend starting in the mid-1980s. Around this time, agricultural lands peaked at just over a third of the island.